This is K2 News at 6 on your side. Yeah, this is my home. My home that I have no more of. A woman returns home to destruction, and hours later, her RV is still ruined. We're live tonight in the Centennial neighborhood with the startling chain of events that left this woman nowhere to go and landed a man in the hospital. And here's a live look at the stadium in Tampa, where Super Bowl 55 is well underway, and already health experts are warning about a potential super spreader event, not so much at the stadium, but your own home, the devastating impacts the big game could have across the country. And all eyes are on Washington, D.C. this week as Democrats move forward with a COVID relief plan. But tomorrow, they'll reveal a new bill to give families with children extra help. Thanks for joining us tonight on K2 News at 6. I'm Katherine Kissel. Here is the damage left behind from a shocking chain of events that happened last night. Police say that a man in the, is in the hospital with serious injuries. He crashed a car into that RV after being shot. It all happened in the Centennial neighborhood in Southeast Portland. And that's where we find K2's Allison Mechanic tonight. And Allison, you've learned new information. Yeah, Catherine, nearly 24 hours after this crash first happened, the destruction is still here. If you take a look here, you can see just how badly this RV was damaged. Now, according to Portland police, they say that a car was driving on the road this way and then they, the driver was shot and then they lost control of the car and they slammed right here into the back of this RV. We spoke to neighbors today who tell us they're extremely concerned about this. This destruction is all that's left of Jessica Peterson's home. Her RV was parked on Southeast Hague Street last night when a driver crashed into it after being shot. The car plowed right into Peterson's home where she sleeps with her dog and cat. Thankfully, she wasn't there last night when the shooting and crash happened because if she was, could have been completely different. Um, you know, my cat would have been in the hospital. My dog probably would have been in the hospital. I would have been in the hospital, you know, um, it's, it's sad. It's really sad that this happened. I mean, I don't know where I'm going to live now. As Peterson works to figure out her next steps, police are continuing to investigate what led to the shooting. They don't have any suspect information, but say they were called to the neighborhood just before 10 p.m. for a shooting. When they arrived, they rushed the injured driver to the hospital, where he remains in critical condition at this time. I can't ever catch a break. Neighbors tell us that their biggest concern right now is that the shooter is still on the loose. We are working to try and find some more information about the driver, but we don't have any of that just yet. But we'll update our website as soon as that information becomes available. If you have any information that can help police figure out how this all happened, contact Portland Police. In Southeast Portland, Allison Mechanic, K2 News. Allison, thank you. This is a developing story, so stay with us on air and online at katu.com for the latest information. Taking another live look from Washington, D.C. tonight, where it's set to be a busy week for lawmakers. Happening tomorrow, House Democratic leaders will announce a bill that would give millions of families at least $3,000 per child. It's a key element in President Joe Biden's nearly $2 trillion COVID-19 relief package. The bill would give families $3,600 for kids under the age of 6 and $3,000 for kids 6 to 17 for one year. The full benefit would be for single parents earning up to $75,000 a year or couples who earn up to $150,000. Happening now, millions are tuning in to watch the Super Bowl, but health experts hope that you're doing it safely. Some fear that today's big game could lead to another super spreader event. Here's ABC's Elwin Lopez with the details. The U.S. death toll from COVID-19 continues to rise. More than 462,000 American lives lost, according to Johns Hopkins University. But an HHS document obtained by ABC News shows there has been a four-week downward trend of reported coronavirus cases, resulting in a 50% decline since the peak on January 8th. This positive news coming as the vaccine rollout slowly gains momentum. The CDC reporting more than 30 million Americans have received at least one dose and about 2% of the country has received both shots. Just thrilled to death. I couldn't believe it. I'm just, I feel so blessed. But on this Super Bowl Sunday, there is concerned crowds gathering to watch the game could become super spreader events. Viruses will not evolve and mutate 
if you do not give them an open playing field. Meanwhile, in Washington, the debate over President Biden's $1.9 trillion dollar COVID relief package continues, including those $1,400 checks for many Americans. The size of those checks, non-negotiable for the president. But in an interview with CBS News, signaling he may be willing to target those checks to Americans with lower incomes. I'm prepared to negotiate that, but here's the deal. Middle class folks need help. Republicans arguing the package is just too big, the price tag too high. Well, I think Republicans are uh, are willing to to spend between uh, 600 and 700 billion dollars more. Democrats pushing back. Uh, this is a moment where the greatest risk we could take, as the president has said, is not the risk of doing too much; it's the risk of doing too little. A new ABC News Ipsos poll shows 49 percent of Americans think Biden should pass his package with just Democratic votes. 40% support a smaller relief bill with bipartisan support. Elwin Lopez, ABC News, Atlanta. Gyms in Oregon's extreme risk counties now have the ability to reopen with a stricter new set of guidelines. That's causing some to go against the governor's order and reopen without meeting all of the requirements. K2's Megan Allison joins us live from North Portland tonight. And Megan, you talked with an indoor cycling studio today, and how are they operating with these guidelines? Yeah, Catherine, current state guidelines for Multnomah County say you can only have up to six customers inside at a time. Star Cycle is complying with that, but the governor is also asking for 25 feet of space between people. That's a change that some gym owners are calling unreasonable. Danielle Mazzari tells us she waited months to reopen the first time. She welcomed customers back in October, only to get shut down a month later. When learning the new state guidelines, Mazzari says she made the decision to open back up under the same regulations as the fall, keeping about six feet of space between bikes. The gym owner tells us before her last reopening, she worked with OSHA, implementing sanitation and filtration guidelines. Missouri says that, combined with face masks, has her feeling safe about returning to the studio. But what I've seen since we've been open is a spark light in our clients' eyes in the community that has returned. The, there, what's happening is exactly what we had hoped to happen, and that was to build that inner strength again. Staff with the governor's office tell us indoor activities pose a greater risk than outdoor when it comes to the spread of COVID-19, which is why they did not allow these to reopen in extreme risk counties. Her team is calling this change an incremental step forward as they monitor these adjustments and the impact on community spread. We did speak with multiple gym owners who say moving from extreme to high risk will make a big difference as it allows studios to return to 25% capacity. Live in North Portland, Megan Allison, K2 News. Megan, thank you. Some California churches are open again now that the state has revised its guidelines for places of worship following a Supreme Court ruling. The court lifted a ban on indoor church services during the pandemic, and now churches can open indoors at a 25% capacity, but singing is still not allowed. Church leaders are doing what they can to keep their buildings safe for their congregations. In reality now, we know we were upholding the law and it was the governor of the state that was breaking the law. We completely shut everything down, go through with these, they look like fog machines, but they're sanitization machines, go through every row, every seat, all of that. The Supreme Court ruling is the most significant legal victory after California's coronavirus restrictions. Taking a live look now over several of our sky cams across the area, and we are ending the weekend on a dry note. It was nice to see the sun out there today. K2's Nikki Torres is filling in for Joe tonight. And I know you were talking about some chilly temperatures on the way, Nikki. We're talking about 20s, 30s. That is all coming at the end of this next work week, and so it comes along with freezing temperatures is the potential for some snow showers for today. However, we saw some showers from this morning, then we dried out, got a little bit of some sunshine. We are going to carry that into our Monday. So tomorrow morning as you head out the door, upper 30s, a lot of cloud cover as you head out the door. We're slowly going to break into that sunshine a little bit towards the afternoon hours and we are expecting mid 40s for tomorrow. I mentioned cold weather coming, so freezing temperatures Thursday, Friday and even into Saturday into the weekend. So to put all of that into perspective, overnight lows are expected in the 20s and we're going to see our afternoon high temperatures in the 30s. But you look at what we saw from today. It was low 50s in Portland and Vancouver. We saw upper 40s out of Salem. It is going to be a totally different story as we get into the end of this next work week. Even the radar right now,
looking pretty clean overall. We are seeing mainly clear skies for some parts of the region. And again, those dry conditions, we are going to carry that into tomorrow. All right, Nikki, thank you. Looking ahead also this week, President Trump's second impeachment trial is set to begin Tuesday. The single article of impeachment accuses Trump of inciting the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. Sources say congressional investigators are combing through video to see if they can link Trump and his associates to the insurrection. Democrats would need the support of 17 Republicans to convict Trump. Still ahead on K2 News at 6, gun sales boom across the country. And it's a form of uh, feeling secure in a world that's far from secure. Stores believe more people are buying for safety. A new survey shows what exactly new gun owners are afraid of. And at the start of the pandemic, the world's biggest cities were put on lockdown. Although some believe it saved lives, one professor argues that's not the case. And later on, one of Portland's most well-known bridges gets a makeover. How you can weigh in on what it looks like next.